All right, folks, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to day two uh, of our throttle free uh, live trading briefs here at Top Gun Options, how to target profits in a hostile environment. And uh, it doesn't get any more hostile than, uh, once again, you and I bailing out Wall Street uh, as they privatize their profits and they socialize all the risk, right? We all... We all backstop them, they get rich, and we just hang out. Uh, I should call this brief like how to turn an avowed capitalist into a socialist because I'm going to share some stuff with you, you know, in the past 24 hours. Things are just, things are insane. From Moody, the, the ratings, the credit rating agencies, remember those folks in 2008? They got paid fees from the companies they rated. Hey, is this your envelope of money on the dinner table? Oh, yeah, I must have dropped it there. Oh, that's weird. I got a AAA rating. Uh, it, it's disgusting. So in 2008, all those rating agencies failed. How do you think they just rated all of these banks that are failing? It, it, it's insanity what's going on. Joe Biden mumbles McShitty Pants lying to the country yesterday. Shocker. I mean, that's that's nothing new. That's not news, Wiz. Yeah, I know. But this is... This is bad. This is bad. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. The I, I hate I told you so moments. I told you so. I sat in the board of trade looking into a camera at the Options News Network saying, don't do this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Or do it. Or I'll, we'll talk about or do it. Now I'm going into the or do it uh, camp. And you're going to you're going to like what I have to say since we are do, not or do it. We are doing it. Uh, so I'll give you my take on everything and then obviously how we're going to make money. So the mission objective of the week, folks, uh, is to show you how 2023, including this shit show, uh, could be your most profitable year ever. And I've been showing, I showed you yesterday, going to continue showing you it today, uh, our uh, methodology, our risk management processes and, and all that good stuff. What did I tell you yesterday the market was going to do? You don't have to type it because I'll tell you what I told you yesterday. I said we're going to get a technical bounce up to what? 3,900. Look at the S&P 500. Technical bounce yesterday up to 3,900. So uh, selling gets a little bit exhausted. Uh, they get out. It reloads, and we're going to head lower. So if you didn't get into the June uh, trudge that we covered yesterday, Today would be a perfect opportunity to do it. Nothing changed in 24 hours, right? If you're a very tactical trader, if you got filled on that trade yesterday, you're like, oh my God, it's a little underwater today. If that's you, leave or stay. If that's you, stay and become a member. If that's if that's how you're trading, you're doing it wrong, right? Uh, 24 hours, uh, my commit criteria don't change. I mean, they can in 24 hours, like between Thursday and Friday when we found out who was swimming naked as the tide went out. So good stuff. We're, we have a lot to cover uh, today. Our flight schedule for the week, we knocked out our welcome aboard brief so you don't have to sit through all those boring slides about me from yesterday. Uh, let me give you the replay link in case you are new. I know some of our uh, strategic partners mailed. Uh, so I know we have a ton of new folks in here. Where is the replay page? FT replay. So yesterday's brief is at the top. If you're just joining me today, great. Welcome aboard. But you got to go watch the replay from yesterday, especially if you're new, especially if you're like, I have no idea who this guy is talking. I have zero time to see it here today and go through all of that again because we have a lot of work to do. So please go watch the replay uh, from yesterday when you get a chance. Today we are in uh, the primary brief, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, oh, only... Great response yesterday. If this feels like the old days, no offense, or well, it's this, this it's a fact. Everybody's a genius when the market's going straight up. Everybody's a genius after Jerome Powell drops a financial nuke at the bottom of COVID. Everybody's a genius when the market's going straight up. And you know when Top Gun Options does great. Uh, and a ton of people flock here when shit hits the fan. And that's obviously when we shine. I can I can outperform everybody on the way up and I destroy them on the way down. And you're going to see that or you are seeing that uh, because uh, a lot of people are scared right now. And I love it. Wiz doesn't love it. Gordon Gecko loves it. 
You guys know I am bipolar. You have got to grab your slot yesterday. There was no solo Amazon brief uh, yesterday. Uh, I moved that to Thursday. Uh, solo Amazon is not part of full throttle, but if you're interested in maybe just kind of test flying a little what we do at a really cheap price in one service, I'll do that on Thursday. But my mission objective is to cover all the full throttle stuff uh, first because that's where the, the meat of everything is. Uh, so 20, you got 27, man. We will fill. Uh, hell, we might even fill today. I, I, who knows? It depends on you all. Uh, here is the link to grab your membership real quick reminder. If you just want to check us out for a couple months in our live trade briefs and do the eight training sessions to find out what options are and all that stuff, that's right there. If you want to get a 50% discount, uh, on an annual membership and get access to our investment club, one of our investment clubs, this is the way to go. I'd say about 80 to 90% of our TGO members, uh, are right there. So not only do you get all the full throttle stuff we're doing this week and the training, you get access to an investment club where I throw all my trades in there immediately, open, close, and uh, your fellow members do that uh, as well. If you want a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, eh, I want to check out what you do, but I definitely want access to that investment club for a little bit. Do this one, man. $4.97 uh, a month. So what happened yesterday after we ended our brief? If you had become a member and you were in the hunters, you would have gotten this trade. I did a bear call spread right around noon, right around 11.51. The 39.10, 39.15 at $1.60. Closed that thing for a 75% profit, or actually I think it ran. That's what I did. I said I was going to let this thing run. I think I put it in order. Regardless, if you, you're regardless. If you did that trade, it made 2,400 bucks, 2,500 bucks yesterday. In how long? That's eleven oh. That's one oh four. If you let it expire at the end of the day, you got the max profit. If you closed it when I fired this order, it was a seventy five percent profit. I made nineteen hundred bucks in essentially what's that? An hour and thirteen minutes. An hour and thirteen minutes, nineteen hundred bucks. This is why I started these investment clubs because of the COVID crash. I'd get done live trade briefs and sit here and print money during the COVID crash. And people are like, dude, what are you doing after the live trade briefs? Hmm, this is how you get access. So if you want access to those invest that investment club, the hunters, it's either this or this. This is kind of your test flight, okay? Right there. People are like, do you offer free trials? Yeah, I do, you're in it. You get four free live trade briefs this week. Ain't nothing free after that, folks. And I actually, when I go to conferences and stuff, people are like, dude, why don't you charge for the full throttle week? You're making us look bad. Well, that's because you suck. That's why. All right, so let's go. Yeah, the link's in the chat box. Go.topkinoptions.com slash FT dash hunters. Okay, that's the name of the investment club slash hunter. So again, if you want access to the live uh, trading uh, investment club, it's either the annual for $29.95 uh, or try it for a couple months. As a business owner, I want you in here the rest of your life. As a good dude, do that for a couple months and then upgrade. Save money. Save money. Okay. Don't 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 do the the S, the hunters monthly for forever. You can knock yourself out. I appreciate it, but that would be dumb. All right, we got to go. Uh, so I'm not going to give you all the stuff I gave yesterday about me, my bio, TGO, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna, I'm going to treat you just like you're in a live trade brief. Let's get airborne. Uh, do you think uh, that young Russian soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers in Bakhmut turning each other into hair, teeth, and eyeballs give a shit about the SVB bank or about Barney Frank? Barney effing Frank. Congressman Frank, who wrote Franken Dodd or the Dodd Frank bill. We're not, we're never going to let 2008 happen again. He sat on the board of Signature Bank in New York City getting a big fat paycheck. And it failed. His bank was closed. Who did he blame? Cryptocurrency. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So. It's cryptocurrency's fault that your bank invested in that Ponzi scheme, pixie dust. Oh, I get it. Okay. I love the fact that he shouted down Elizabeth Warren yesterday. Elizabeth Warren's like, Trump did all of this. Of course he did. Trump uh, did everything. 
Mumbles make shitty pants is the press conference. It's not a press conference when you say, God bless our troops. And you and you and you stumble out of the room as quick as you can trying to find the doorknob because you can't answer questions. So. Elizabeth Warren, it's Trump's fault. All of this is Trump's fault. Got it. Barney Frank, nothing to do with Trump. It was cryptocurrency. OK, got it. So Pocahontas and Barney Frank shooting arrows at each other. But here's what I'm getting at, folks. Nobody cares. As we're sitting here in this live trade brief, there are young men on the other side of the planet turning each other into hair, teeth, and eyeballs. The Ukrainian part of every one of these live trade briefs ends with this sentence, so I'll, I'll bring it up front. This is going to get worse. Who said it the other week? Samantha Powers, who runs... Uh, USAID, she said the quiet part out loud finally. We're at war with Russia, but the Ukrainians are doing the fighting. Did you all vote for, for, for a war in Russia? Uh-oh. You know who fights proxy wars? Cowards. I thought a couple years ago, Barack Hussein Obama and Democrats, especially his, his wife, said what? Americans aren't exceptional. We're nobody special. America is not exceptional. Wow. Wait, fast forward to today. Well, we, uh, you guys better be thankful that American kids aren't dying in Ukraine. How fucking disgusting a statement is that? So apparently we are exceptional. Our young children, our young men not dying in Ukraine is good because we're better. So are we exceptional or are we not? How about... All war is bad. How about stop killing? How about we take a break for a week? If at the end of the week, locking you two guys in a room, you can't figure something out, I'll go, I'll give you fighter jets. Keep killing each other. Have fun. But me, Elon Musk, the Pope, I love mentioning me in the sentence with those two dudes. If you say the word peace, you're a Russian agent. You're a Putin sympathizer. You're unpatriotic. You're anti-American. Me. I'm anti-American, folks. Me. For saying John Lennon, man. How about we give peace a chance? Let me get this out of the way. Vladimir Putin's a war criminal. He and his general should be arrested and tried and if convicted, executed. Am I still a Russian agent? A Russian plant? Or am I a dude that knows, sees, can feel the horror of war. But why am I rambling about this? Because yesterday when we talked about our June trudge, between now and June, something horrific will happen in here. Ukraine's getting ready for a spring offensive. The Russians are getting ready for a spring offensive. Yay. Vladimir Putin, Petrov, his SecDef, his National Security Agency, and their national media have all looked into a camera and said, are you guys listening? If we are really losing, if we're backed into our corner, we're going to use nukes. What's our response? Or not my response. What's our leader's response? Of no, they'd never do that. Folks, I was the adversary officer of my fighter squadron. I read their books. We think that using nuclear weapons is insanity. Mutually assured destru destruction, nobody would ever use them. You read the Soviet books, what do they say? Uh, we, we can win a nuclear exchange. You people are stupid. They think they can win. And our leadership in Washington, duh, they'd never do that. You tell me what the VIX is going to do or the S&P 500 is going to do when you see breaking news on the bottom of the screen that says, report potential nuclear device used in Ukraine. You tell me what the VIX is going to do and the S&P 500 is going to do. Nobody's going to give a shit about the Silicon Valley Bank at that point. I told you this wisdom yesterday. The market only cares when it cares, and it'll care about that. Uh, moving on, uh, you know, just North Korea fires cruise missiles from what? A submarine. Let me let that sink in. A submarine. Sea of Japan. Submarines off Hawaii. Submarines off San Francisco. I don't know if I'd have a problem with that. Ladies and gentlemen, Krima, some young guy, is working with Russia, is working with Iran. 
I ran Israel. I briefed this three weeks ago. Guess what happened? I think it was yesterday or today. The report that Israel released 11 or 12, 13 days ago said what? Iran will have enough, am I saying this right? Fissible, fizzle, enough nuke shit to build a nuclear weapon. They gave it days. They said 12 days Iran will have enough to build a nuke. Benjamin Netanyahu repeatedly states what? The state of Israel will never let Iran have a nuclear weapon. The state of Iran. Uh, we're building uh, nuke, uh, nuclear power for peaceful purposes, but if we ever had a nuke, we're going to use it to wipe Israel off the planet. Again, tell me what the VIX is going to do and the S&P 500 is going to do when, not if, Israel full-blown war with Iran. Iran closes the Straits of Hormuz, oils at 300 bucks. 30-second mention, China in the next couple years will take back Taiwan attempt to take back Taiwan. Did you see the war game, whenever it was, by the RAND Corporation or whoever did it? Three carrier battle groups gone. 100,000 United States casualties trying to defend Taiwan. Are you listening? Again? S, we are in the S part of the B, brief, strategic. Now we're going to get operational and then tactical and trade. But ladies and gentlemen, if any of that was news to you, you are a tactical trader and you can get destroyed. This is why I jumped in our time machine yesterday. I flew out to June and we put some protection on, man. Tomorrow in accelerated retirement, we can talk about some long-term bullish stuff in case I'm just a complete idiot. Our portfolio is going to have what we need in it. But I'm telling you right now, as your intelligence briefer, if you're not thinking about this stuff and what can potentially happen, you will get destroyed. Weakness invites aggression. I'm still waiting. Screw the January 6th commission. Or did you see the Afghanistan surrender hearings the other day? Can somebody tell me when the war crime trial of Joe Biden, Lloyd Austin, and General Milley is? After those 13 service personnel were killed during Joe Biden's absolute awful withdrawal from Afghanistan, they ordered a drone strike on a car that killed seven children looking for water. Delete the word Biden, put in the word Trump. They would have impeached him for the 57th time. It's a war crime. No, no, Wiz. When we do something like that, it's the fog of war and nobody's responsible. General Milley called it a righteous strike. Three days later, he was like, oh, shit. But when we do that, it's an error. When an enemy does that, it's a war crime. Killed seven children, folks. Weakness invites aggression. Now, I can't stand Donald Trump. The dude's right in one respect. There's no way Vladimir Putin would have invaded uh, Ukraine. Trump's nuts. He, Putin knows Trump's a little nuts and would have done something. So, no kidding. Uh, so, Aaron was in D.C. last week at a Veterans in Energy conference. Someone in the audience uh, asked General Abizad, Abizad about that. Needless to say, he evaded answering the question. That's what generals do. All right, let's get off. So strategic, folks, the world is an incredibly dangerous place. And you're ready for this. It's getting worse. Whether it's Ukraine, Israel, Iran, or China, the three major spots in the world, do you think anything I just briefed is getting better or going to get worse? If you think better, get bullish. Buy the S&P 500 with both hands. Sell the wife, kids, mortgage the house. Get bullish. If you don't, you better have some treasures on or you better have your finger on the trigger. Put some treasures in there in your account and have them as saved trades. Because if you see breaking news at the bottom of the screen or a text on your phone, I'm wired into a, this thing's priceless right here. Fortunately, it's glued to my head. Pentagon, politics, hedge funds, a lot of, got a big network of folks. So hopefully I'd try and hear something. 
Uh, but the VIX can, in this case, would be up to 80 in the blink of an eye. But not, not, not a bad idea to fly out in time and have some, some protection on. So let's just keep laughing about this, folks. We're getting played. We're idiots. We, the people, are stupid. We are sheep billionaires the entire weekend frothing at the mouth you got 48 hours or we're all gonna die the back of my my book from sea level to sea level quotes lloyd blankfein the guy ran goldman sachs at the height of the financial crisis remember sundays they were always meeting because of the asian market open it was a sunday afternoon and they were uh they were pulling up to the new york fed and I guess Lloyd was in a limousine, of course, with a bunch of his Goldman Sachs lieutenants. And I guess one of them was panicking. And I give Lloyd Blankfein credit for saying this. He's like, dude, you're getting ready to get out of a limousine to walk into the New York Fed. You're not getting out of a Higgins boat on Omaha Beach. That tells you a lot, doesn't it? These people are cowards to begin with. They take a shitload of risk on cheap money, and then when it blows up in their face, they panic, and we got to bail them out. It, 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 it breaks my heart. I love this tweet this morning. Uh, Steve Leisman, who's just sitting on the TV right now, I asked a senior Treasury official if all uninsured deposits are insured. He said... A central component of the administration strategy has been sending a clear message to depositors, including depositors beyond the two banks and roofs. Their deposits are, in fact, safe. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you my response. Good answer, comrade. Now that the state officially owns all the banks, let's start paying the CEOs and all the executives a true fair wage. I'd say about 70 grand a year to start two weeks vacation, and we seize all of their private jets. Ladies and gentlemen, kind of like if everybody is NATO, like Ukraine, what's the point of NATO? If everybody's insured, why do we even have the FDIC? Ladies and gentlemen, the Joe Biden yesterday morning federalized, socialized all the banks. But you're, good, you're still going to sit there in your medium income job as all of these bank CEOs, executives, managing presidents make a shit pot of money, taking a lot of risk with our money. Do you get this? Do you see what's going on in front of you? I warned you in 2008 in the Board of Trade, don't do this. If you were here at Topkin Options, what did I say a year and a half ago? I said, Jerome, stop pumping money in, raise rates right now. Even though I'm a naval aviator and I'm used to crash landing aboard a ship, now that I own my own two fighter jets and the taxpayers don't, I actually grease the landings because I pay for the brakes and the tires. But no, you can't, you know, Hornet, you have to land hard aboard the ship. I know how to land an airplane perfectly safely. A year and a half ago, I said, stop pumping money and raise rates now. Start, start. We will grease this landing. Nobody listened to me, of course. Eight, nine months ago, when that CPI print that came out, that was at a 40-year high. The last time inflation was that high, my sister was alive. What did I say? I got on a brief like this, and I said, okay, what time is the emergency Fed meeting and press conference? If I were Jerome Powell, I would have been like, we're meeting at noon, emergency 1% point increase. That would have been like, boom. Yeah. The market would have got kicked in the gut initially, and then would have went, all right, all right, he's on it. Didn't happen. Kept printing money, kept interest rates low, and here we are. All of these idiots in these banks, the smart money, did they not know that the Fed was eventually going to raise rates and that their trade, their positions would get destroyed? Or did they know that and still do it because they knew this would happen. I just, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm dripping with discontent and just, they're gross. I've been there, folks. I've been in these rooms with these type of people. One of the partners at, at a place said, "Wiz, re retail traders are cordwood. 
We use we the people as liquidity. Yeah, right, Bevan? What did they tell you for a year? Inflation's transitory. The effing president, treasury secretary, who's an arsonist, and the Fed chief, Janet Jerome Joe. Transitory. Oh, wait, oh, wait it isn't transitory. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, it, it's Putin. It's Putin's price inflation. I can't, I, 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 I can't. Give Ken Griffin some credit this morning. Ken Griffin was our competitor in Chicago. Lives down here. See his G5 flying in the book all the time. I know Ken. I, I don't know him well. I've met him. Ken Griffin says SVB depositors should not have been bailed out. Quote, it would have been a great lesson in moral hazard. Hey, Ken, you were in Chicago when I was in Chicago, obviously, because Citadel was right down the street, one of our competitors. I thought 2008 was our moral lesson. I thought Barney Frank and Chris Dodd had Dodd Frank. I thought the adults were back in charge. Here we are again. Um, Furious. Capitalism without failure is is Christianity without hell. Party on. Thirty one trillion dollars in debt. Nobody cares, Wiz. I mean, the party that's not currently in power cares. Republicans now. We're going we're not gonna raise the debt ceiling. Democrats under Trump. We're not gonna raise the debt ceiling. And they all do. Can you run your house like this? Can you literally run your house like this? You have your own uh, printer sitting in the corner and you just, oh, shit, I got to pay the credit card bills. Why do I have to pay taxes? The most famous interview, I can't even believe a Federal Reserve chief was on 60 Minutes, but Jerome Powell on 60 Minutes. Do you remember this a couple of years ago? I just, I I make money. I, I make it. We print it. And I send it to Federal Reserve Banks, or I just kind of hit enter on my computer and money. Dude, I owe, I owe the government some money this year. Can, can you hit enter a couple times for the Buckley family? Trade the market you have, not the one you want, right? So I'll, I'll finish my rant, and we're going to make money off the stupidity of others. But ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, and I, I started the brief with this, Moody's. The prestige, I love this. It's, I, didn't we laugh about this yesterday? I love, like, Bill Ackman, legendary investor Bill Ackman. You mean the idiot? Or Ray Dalio, cash is trash in Davos? When I said get out of the market and he told you to get in? Legendary investor. If you use the term legendary investor with stupid investors, I'm the emperor of the universe of investing. I'm going to start calling myself. The prestigious rating agency. Uh, they gave him an A rating up until March 10th. Did you see him come out this morning? Standard and Poor's and Moody's downgraded all of them. <laughs> uh, wow. The prestigious rating agency who was responsible for all the 2008 bullshit as well. And this one prestigious. I, President Edward Matthew Buckley, would hold, I'd be, I'd call the attorney general right now and like, did, it, it, are there criminal charges? This is fraud. Is there some wire fraud in here? So there, so, nobody went to jail. The biggest financial crisis this country seen in 2008, nobody did a perp walk. Nobody is responsible in a country where nobody is responsible. Nobody is held to account. It's over with Marcus Aurelius or so or some French guy around the Revolutionary War. I forget. Somebody's like once a once a government or the people realize they can print themselves into extinction, whatever. There's a quote out there. I forget what it is. But folks, this is. You can't. So. You ready for this, folks? What came out this morning? I, I'm just, I'm absolutely stunned at what came out this morning. This is my stunned face. What did CPI 
and PPI do this morning, folks? Or the month over month, year over year, sorry. They came in exactly to the decimal. A perfect print on inflation numbers. We laughed yesterday because over the weekend, Goldman Sachs is like, wow, with this, with this craziness, the Fed can't raise rates next week. A week ago when I was in Washington, D.C., Jerome Powell did what, folks? He was bringing the heat, wasn't he? A week ago, I can't, what a difference a week makes. March 7th. Oh my God, look at, look at this. Literally a week ago, I was in Washington. Tuesday morning, I was sitting on stage at this moment in the Congressional Auditorium briefing. Full steam ahead for Jerome Powell. The markets tremble, but the Fed chair knows he can't let up now. Why can't he let up now, ladies and gentlemen? Why couldn't, oh wow, look at this. If you logged in early, I tell you to log in early, you got a trade that's up six, seven hundred bucks right now. Why can't he let up? Why a week ago, ladies and gentlemen, couldn't he let up? Because inflation is raging. You and I and the average American are burning to death from inflation. But now the smart money who got bailed out by you and I is laughing and going, <laughs> well, he's got it. It's still raging, obviously, and we can't, he can't do nothing because we're all really going to get in trouble. He's going to do a 25. He's going to give a little pittance and we're going to rally here. So this, this thing could have a little steam. Do not get me wrong. We got a technical bounce to 3,900 as I briefed. We might even keep going until we get back up to this 200. Uh, 100 intersection. We'll we'll talk in a couple minutes when we get tactical, but this is all this is all I I, I uh, actually the answer to that is both. Are these people totally incompetent or just disgusting individuals? I I tend to believe after doing the medicine folks, I see souls. I I, I do. I am I am as a kid again, right? I see souls. I try not to see the shell. And I fail sometimes, especially after getting back from Costa Rica three or four weeks ago. I still, the fact that this happened as I'm still trying to integrate on the medicine is just, it's insane to me. Because this, it, it, I, 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 I did not want this to happen again, folks. But we're in it. Nobody cares in Washington, folks. When I was there this time last week. It literally is a beltway. All the people walking with their coats and ties and their briefcases trying to lobby the money. It, it, it's, it's, I, 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 can, I can see it. These people drunk with power and the allure of all of this stuff. Inside that beltway, folks, they don't give a shit. Joe Biden doesn't fill up his own gas tank, folks. These people are immune to inflation because they don't care. Janet Yellen, when she got done, destroying the st uh, our economy as well went to wall street man where does ben bernanke work does everybody remember ben bernanke the original arsonist who in 2008 destroyed capitalism where does ben bernanke work he's a senior advisor at citadel This is like an episode of Billions, Axe Capital. We hired the regulators away from their, their, their government job where they barely make any money. We pay them a shitload of money and they provide cover for us. President Edward Matthew Buckley would forbid this. President Edward Matthew Buckley would pass a law to not only forbid that, to also forbid generals and admirals after they retire from working at all in the defense industry. Period. You got your retirement, General. Go fish. I'm going to work at Raytheon so I could get my buddy who's still on active duty to pass to, to fund shit, and then I'll give him a job. U.S. inflation cooled in February as the Fed confronts bank failures. Jeez, it's... Jeez, I, 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 I can't believe the inflation came in perfectly in line. 
and didn't come in hot as a lot of people were like, it's, it's going to be hot from what we hear. No, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's in line. Oh, uh, okay. They really do think you're an idiot. And no offense, you sitting here, you're not. There's a lot of stupid people in this country. If you listen to run for president, do you know how many people I'd have to kill? You know what? That's so not true anymore. Based on the current or politicians in general, and I am proud. You ready for this? I have no skeletons in my closet. They're out. I love my skeletons. I embrace them as a result of psychedelic-assisted therapy. I have zero skeletons. I am absolutely proud of who I am. Like my brother Slider said on his podcast, uh, you want to talk about a great dude? He had a weapons delivery go wrong in Iraq in a Tomcat. That's a bad guy house. Are you sure? Okay, it's a bad guy house. All right, great. Boom. 12 innocent Iraqis. That dude carried that drugs, alcohol, suicide attempts. Listen to his podcast. Scroll down and listen to Slider's podcast. You know what? On, on his one podcast, he said, Wiz, I am thankful for my suffering. And I am as well. So you know what? Maybe I will run for president. because it, I can't, Could I do any worse than Joe Biden? God almighty, I would, I would, I would clip people, to Christopher Ray. I would fire, I would uh, pardon a uh, Buffalo shaman dude. Oh my God, man. I would, I would, who was it? Uh, I think Lou dog or one of you guys posted when I was testifying or on the stage last week, uh, the uh, scent of a woman. If I was five years younger, I would take a flamethrower to this place. That's how I feel, man. All right. Uh, da, 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 we already talked about that. So, so shelter inflation, let's di- I always love looking at the headline numbers because idiots look at the headline numbers. If you woke up this morning, you saw, hey, look, inflation came in perfectly in line and you went on your day. If you dig into the inflation numbers, shelter inflation has never been higher as what? Real wages drop for the 32nd straight month. <laughs> Greg. You have my vote, and I'd vote early and often. You probably live in Chicago. I appreciate the, the vote. So, folks, if you dig into the inflation numbers, again, they made the headline numbers perfect so we can go, yay, okay, market's going to go up because Jerome doesn't have to act. He doesn't. A week ago, Jerome Powell was like, the average Americans are hurting, and I, I got I to gotta get inflation down. No, 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 a nice banking crisis is going to is going to force you not to do anything. Isn't that great folks? So, they have a banking crisis based on their own stupidity and greed and the free money of the Fed, and now that they had the crisis, the Fed has to pull back a little bit cuz they they don't want other bank failures. But we the people will continue to burn to death from inflation. You couldn't write a better script than this. Wall Street Journal op-ed was beautiful. Biden's bank bailout whoppers. Perhaps investors don't believe the intervention. First of all, folks, did you hear this? That over the weekend, the FDIC said it couldn't find a private buyer. Uh Uh-uh. I also heard that they had a favored buyer. But the FDIC chairman, a limousine liberal, is hostile to bank mergers. So you ready for this, folks? I think they stepped in way too early. Bill Ackman said we're all going to die, Wiz. Bill Ackman's a tool. So over the weekend, it turns out that the market was functioning. A bank was could have swooped in and done this on their own. The chairman said no because I don't like bank mergers. So the capitalism could have worked, and the government said no. That's, that's a story that ain't being told, folks. There was a potential buyer. The private market could have figured this out on its own. This is what you have to do. <clears throat> Either let it burn, or we're all comrades. Instead, regulators offered a solution that bails out everybody. 
right? At unknown costs that Biden didn't acknowledge, did he? I said to you this yesterday. The money will come from the fees that banks pay into the fund. You guys saw three of my rants yesterday, probably. Banks aren't fucking charities. They don't have any money other than what? The money we put into them. So guess who's going to be paying more in fees? <clears throat> the Wall Street Journal, of course, says it nicer than I do. That's not the full story. They pay fees, blah, blah, blah. But the insurance fund, guess what? So the Wall Street Journal put it in a nice couple paragraphs, what I already said, folks. Yet after VC capitalist Democrat donors, law, oh, uh, what's his name? Sang, Sam Bankman fraud the biggest donor behind George Soros to Democrats. So all of these limousine liberals in the Silicon Valley are Democrat donors. You wonder why they got bailed out? Silicon Valley ain't Orange County, California, folks, full of Republicans. Apparently, Silicon Valley investors and startups are too big to lose money when they take risks. They benefited enormously from the Fed's pandemic liquidity hose which caused SVB's bank deposits to double. Wow. And SVB paid up to 5.5% on large deposits, which it used to fund loans to startups. But now we're guaranteeing a risk-free return for startups and their investors. I built this company. I built other companies with a shitload of risk. I've had companies fail. Not anymore. Some 85 to 90% of their deposits are uninsured. The cost of this guarantee could be $15 billion. Whiz, who cares? Joe Biden, with a stroke of a pen, $500 billion gone because of student loan, because I need votes from student loan people. It's unconstitutional, and he will lose in court. He even said that. All right, so anyway, I'm, I'm not going to, you know. It, 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 the Wall Street Journal is briefing you on me. Thank you, Wall Street Journal, for being a TGO member and, and writing what I'm saying. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk tactically. Yeah, our country is hosed, but we have our pronouns. Thomas, all we can do is bitch about it. What can we do? Clearly, we can do nothing. Thomas, clearly voters are stupid. Has anybody seen John Fetterman, I don't know, in a month? The voters of the great state of Pennsylvania elected a man with brain damage to the United States Senate. And he can't physically do his job. So, Thomas, what do we do about it? I'd say vote. But, yeah, our elections are 2016 Nancy Pelosi. The Russians interfered our election. It was stolen. It was hacked. 2020. This is the most secure election ever in our nation's history. You think the election system in this country is secure? You're an idiot. We can't do anything, Thomas. It's over with. This is why I tell you that this country is the Balkans. We are fracturing. New England, the left coast, and then the rest of America. Texas, Florida. We are in a civil war right now, but it's actually just very civil. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, they already, folks, they've already contingency planned. His wife will bravely step up to fill his seat. Oh, I love it. Behind every brain dead Democratic male is a power hungry female, Dr. Jill Biden and Fetterman's wife. <clears throat> I I can't even, I can't, folks. All right, so let's get airborne. Now let's get tactical. Like I said yesterday, we have, uh, whoops, timed out. Uh, Like I said yesterday, did everybody, if you didn't attend yesterday, I really don't have time to do it, but did everybody get their tredge on out to June? Watch yesterday's replay uh, to get your June tredge on, man. After my awesome brief so far, just ask me, you need to have your protection on right now. Everybody good to go. Everybody give me a, 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 ver, a, a vertical head nod. Oh, I can't. Stay. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Kelly? 
he was a people did not like that guy in the Hornet community. He was not a uh he was not yeah, Kelly's a, a Kelly's a tool. Uh, he is not whatever. So, all right. So, we have uh our tredge on out to June, but I'm feeling, ladies and gentlemen, uh a technical bounce here. I think we keep going up a little bit. Uh, you know, the Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. If you were in the Lifetime Group or you were in the Hunters this morning, you got that trade, but I'll show you what that trade is right now. Uh, key. So look at all of the, look at uh, First Republic this morning, folks. Fell into these pops. First Republic Bank is up 58%. 58%. Folks, but they don't have weekly options. I mean, I guess you could do. Wait, this is this Friday, right? There, uh, people are going to sell into these pops, folks. These are short squeezes right now. Um, I would not do. You know, the fifty-five. Holy crap! This is out the Friday, right? Whoa. Yeah, so this is a Friday expiration, man. I mean, th these things can re – let me start with this. This is th – these are sniper shots. This is very tactical trading. But um, you could sell into these pops. I mean, 55 is all the way up here. This can keep going. But but look at these. These these rallies tend to fade in these in these names. So First Republic Bank of San Francisco is a regional bank. I mean, hell, the – you know – That's a little too much. That's way 15. I mean, something like this, man. So let me start by saying this, you know, risking 5,300 bucks to make 2,200 bucks, 10 contracts. Risking 35 to make 1,500, 68% probability by Friday. Okay. Um, uh, So, folks, no, no, no. So, a lot of you are making a mistake right now. Options basics, folks. When you see March 23, that is not March 23rd, folks. So, everybody who just wrote that in the chat box is wrong. This is why you need to do your full throttle training. When is the March 23 expiration? Ladies and gentlemen, when you see a month and you see a year, regular, that is a regular monthly option that expires when? One, two, three. The third Friday of the month is when options expire. Monthly options. This is a monthly option. This is not a weekly option. This trade <clears throat> would expire Friday. If it is a weekly options, folks, let me go to SPX, for example. Or no, uh, what would have weeklies? Uh, Amazon. Let's look at Amazon real quick. <clears throat> you see, the regular monthly option has March and a year. The regular monthly option has April and the year. The regular May has, the weeklies have the month, the day, the year. Everybody give me a vertical head nod. Yes, it might be different on all pr platforms. So I'm telling you on the E-Trade platform, that it is Friday expiration. Everybody give me a vertical head nod. Do you understand that? I don't know where you trade. That's not up to me. Okay. So, um, yeah, First Republic only has uh, monthly options. That's why this one is a, a good looking trade because it's out to Friday. This technically would be a weekly option for us. This is a couple days out. So everybody understand that. If you don't understand that, you need to join Full Throttle. Take a look at SPX in the background. We might do a quick bullish sniper. We're going to get a rally right now, folks, up to back. I, I told you 20 minutes ago, if you listen to me, you should put on a bull put spread. We're going to get a technical rally either up to the 100 or the 200, maybe even through it with some airspeed. Bull put spread right now, SPX. Let's fire. And then we'll come back to the, to the regionals. Today. 
39.20 ish. Let me look at 39.20 today. 39.20, 39.15. Ah, it's a little rich for my blood. I'm going to go da- down a little bit. I love this one. 39.15, 39.10, bull put spread, dollar thirty credit, risking about 53 to make two, 55 to make two. A little bit more aggressive would be the 39.20, 39.15. Aggressive trade, 39.20, 39.15. A little more conservative, that one at $1.30. We're going to, and this is technical, folks. This ain't, hey, the bank crisis is over. This is, when I told you yesterday, fundamentals, volatility, technical. I'm going to train you in. This is technical. Ain't no fundamentals in this. Ain't no volatility. Matter of fact, the volatility is starting to come in a little bit, right? I go and I immediately paste for the lifetime members right in there. And then right in here for the hunters. You join today. The lifetime is down the road. I I don't even want to mention lifetime membership to the new folks. Just get airborne now and get into the hunters, okay? Either the monthly, you can do the hunters, or the annual. Get in there now. That one trade, if you make two grand today, that's four months of the hunters. If that trade expires for max profit today. Isn't that awesome? And it could also lose five grand. Always got to say that shit too. Ain't ain't all sunshine and lollipops. This These are not riskless trades. You're not going to come into Wall Street and be like, I'm going to do this and never lose money. Let's get back. Uh, to the to the regionals here. So key, I sold. If you logged in early, like I tell you to do, you're up nine hundred dollars. Two months of your monthly hunters, or six months of the monthly. So uh, key bank, if you logged in early this morning, uh, or you were in the hunters, you got this trade right there. Let's go look at key. I would sell into the pop of all of these. Uh, regional banks. I might even just close that and take the 800, 900 bucks right now. So what's the trade? Let me talk through it. The 1415 bear call spread out to Friday. So let's just take a look at it. This is why I do full throttle folks. It's funny because I have a, I have a four o'clock presentation with, uh, uh, with a, you know, it's a multi-day speaker event. So I'm going to sit here. Unfortunately, in those briefs, I do what? I have to sit there with my 92 PowerPoint slides. Not here, man. We This is live trading. So uh, out the f- uh, Friday, I did the 14-15 bear call spread. Okay. Well, let's go pull up what the current trade is. I'll just show you what the current one is. I sold 75 of this week's 14 calls. That's me saying I don't think key gets above 14 by Friday's closing bell. Wiz, you're wrong. Joe Biden says, I love Key Bank. It's bailed out, and he puts his money there, and it, the stock explodes. Well, it's going to suck. Uh, so that's why I'm buying the 15 upside calls in case it does just explode higher. Bearish on key or at least neutral using calls and it's a spread this tactic you ready for it is a bear call spread it's also what a credit spread i brought in money to do this trade okay now here's we make money folks three out of four ways on this trade isn't this awesome with the bear call spread so here's a little full throttle training we make money three out of four ways on this trade. Let me brief you on the one way we lose money. This currently is the price of key bank, 13, whatever, 1310. Wiz, everything you said just happens. Joe Biden loves key bank, he banks there now, and the stock explodes. That also assumes that I fell asleep between now and Friday and I don't manage this trade. When did I tell you yesterday that I look to eject out of bear call spreads? Double the credit you take in. 17 times 2 is 34. If this trade increases in value to 34 cents, I'd consider ejecting. Don't let it keep exploding. Look to eject. So that's where I would potentially eject. So that's the one chance 
that we lose money. What are the three ways we can make money? Again, that's key bank, current stock price. Key implodes. We make money. Key stays where it is. Between now and Friday, if key just hangs, we make money. Folks, key can even go up. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. As long as it stays below our break even, ladies and gentlemen, which is 1417, literally a dollar north of here. It would have to pop another 15% between now and Friday. It can. More bailouts or more socialism. Or between now and Friday, the idiot politicians start reading the room like, uh, yeah, I mean, we're not, not, not everything is guaranteed. We're just this one special exclusion. And the stocks, these banks start to come in. I don't know what's going to happen, folks. You're in here live with me. But look at this. Using at the money volatility in key options in this live trade brief, there's a 71% probability of making 1300 bucks by Friday. Now, that's currently how the trade is, folks. That's not, uh, you know, the, the, when I, where's this, the, you know, 30 cents, 75 times 30, 75 times 30 is 2250. So my max potential profit in that bear call spread is 2250 by Friday. The metrics, when I click on this, analyze, it's how the trade is right now if you got into it, right? So, they, well, there it is. Risking 52 to make 22. A 69% probability of making that, folks. Okay. Any questions on that spread? Bearish on the regionals using, yeah, I, I can go take a look at that one. Um, I, I, I don't know if I do, I mean, this is a massive move. Let me cover a trade. I like my key trade, but this, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of the same. Uh, you know, the 50, 55 would be an incredibly aggressive trade. but we could go up five bucks. Let's just analyze that one. This is aggressive. Selling the 50, buying the 55 for $1.85, you'd be risking about 47 to make 28. 60% probability of that occurring. Okay. What would whiz, WWWD? The 5560 is a little bit more my speed. Risk in 56 to make 19 with a 70% probability. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on SPX too because I might actually leg into a daily iron condor. SPX, let me go back over here. Let me, let me just read the SPX. I always have, I got my other screens up and I read kind of what's going on here. We'll see if we hold here around 39, it moves in $25 increments. I'll teach you all this stuff guys and gals when you become a member, but the SPX moves in $25 increments. You see that it was hugging this line yesterday. It, it tends to move around the 25, you know, 25 hang down to this one. It's the 25 strikes. I'll teach you all this stuff. Um, but let's see. Um, so this is the one, if I wasn't in the key one already, this one doesn't look too bad. Risking, let me grab screenshots of these folks and I'll, I'll, I'll put them on, on pages. So between these two bear call spreads uh, in, the, in the regionals, you, could pot you're, you got potentially 10 grand most at risk and you could make about five grand. That's pretty good. FRC. And again, folks, these are for my model portfolios, our training accounts here at Top Gun Options. These are based on $100,000 portfolios, and I don't want to risk more than 5%, around five grand on any one trade, right? So that's me. If you don't want to risk five grand, you want to risk 10, you want to risk a million, you want to risk a dollar, you don't want to do anything, that's on you. You are the pilot in command of your portfolio. At Top Gun Options, you're kind of getting the eavesdrop, 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 I always get that wrong. On what I'm doing, it's like you're walking on the floor of the Chicago Board uh, of Trade or the CBOE and kind of 
looking over my shoulder at the pits. Yes, I do. Uh, so, uh, do I, uh, do I ever consider directional trades just using puts and calls? Yeah. But so, so just doing puts and calls folks to me are lottery tickets. Why would you just, if you think something's going to go up, you'd buy some calls. If you think something's going to go down, you buy some puts, right? If you think it's going to go down violently or go up violently, yeah, I'd just be a straight call or a put buyer. Folks, re read in my book, COVID Crash. Um, there were days, folks, at the height of that COVID crash, folks, we're in these live trade briefs. I'm like, as soon as the opening bell sounds, hit enter on buying these SPX puts. There were, I remember live trade briefs making 80, 70, 80, 50 grand on some days on just buying puts at the open. Right? So welcome to Topkin Options because I, ladies, in the F-18 Hornet, I think it could carry 80 weapons, 85 weapons, harpoons, mines, missiles, you know. I didn't carry them all the time. We loaded on the F-18 what we needed for that particular mission, right? So if the mission requires straight call buying or straight put buying, yeah, giddy up, I'll do it. But I like the risk profile of a spread because most things aren't going to go up unlimited or down unlimited. They'll probably move in a range. So I'm cheap, right? Why would I just straight buy a put or a call if I can offset that purchase with a different selling of something, right? So long rambling answer to your short question. The answer is yes, I do trade those sometimes, but it depends on what the market is showing me. Is that good? Good explanation, vertical head nod. Uh, so there you go. What I say? We'll see if we hang at 39.25 here. I use the 246. 246, usually you get confirmation. So we'll see if we're going to hang here at this 39.25. If we don't and you see a break here, I'd fire a bear call spread up here for today. But we'll see. Do we take a little bit of a breather and we're going to keep rallying? I love doing this, man. This is fun. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, let me grab a screenshot of key, the key trade. Because I'll post this on our replay page, our member page. What a good brief. Thank you, Wiz. Uh, file save as key, K-E-Y. I love doing this stuff, folks. This is fun. I don't like where we are right now and what what happened. And but again, you know, I'll rant and rave as whiz, and then we're going to Gordon Gecko this. I really don't care at the end of the day as Gordon Gecko. We can make money as an options trader as long as the market's going up, down, or sideways. Well, that's what the market does, whiz. Precisely, as an options trader, you can potentially make money in all uh, market conditions. Right. Uh, yeah, well, look at that. See, I didn't fire a bear call spread because I wanted to wait two, four, six. And there's a bit. There we go, baby. Back to life. Get going. Yeah, I'll show you what the SPX trade is. It is uh, this one. And this one's for today. This is a day trade. Again, folks, we're in the primary brief. If you were here at old TGO, man, we'd be talking about a month out trade or this or that or all sorts. Dude, this is this is tactical. Again, to my Hornet analogy, I'm, I'm loading weapons on my aircraft based on the, the battlefield conditions. This is what we got to do. If you look across all of my model portfolios, folks, the, the, the vast majority at the top of every one of my model portfolios I manage is what? That. Because this is what we're doing. Now, when or if the market settles down and we get back to some sense of normalcy, we'll giddy back up, right? Giddy up, giddy up. And, and but, you know. Dave, 246, I use a, uh, let me put the chart in the background as I'm taking screenshots. Uh, I use a two-minute candle to make decisions. Two-minute, four-minute, each candle right there is two minutes. An aggressive sniper would be to do something after four minutes. 
six minutes usually gives you a confirmation. Again, that that's a, a separate lecture that's just not, I don't even, I, I, you asked, I answered, I, I don't wanna confuse people. Let me grab screenshots of SPX here. That's a quick and dirty answer, but that's, you know, SPX 314. Analyze, okay. All right, so that's risking 54 to potentially make 2100 bucks today, 79%. Now, if you are like me and you don't want to sit here all day, I can't stand this. I don't sit here, folks. I live, I you know, tend to put in closing orders before I go to the gym. I want to go to yoga at noon. I'm going to get my downward dog on. So you can put in closing orders at this point in case something happens uh, while you're gone, right? Um and I might uh, look at key. Or right, shit, actually, I do. I have that four o'clock brief today. Yeah. All right. Well, now I'll, I'll yeah, I probably will sit here and manage this. If I'm going to leave for an extended period of time, I usually put in some closing orders. Uh, but for now, now nah, I'm going to hang for a little bit. I want to post a replay, get an email out, all sorts of stuff like that. But usually, folks, uh, so I went over by about six minutes right now. Usually our live trade briefs, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, are an hour. Don't forget, Mondays are solo Amazons. I kind of slid it around this week to the end because solo Amazon isn't included uh, with full throttle. But I like, I like what we're doing. So today you got two trades, you got key, uh, and you got an S&P trade. Okay. Uh, and uh, if, if you're liking it, you, First Republic, take a look at that one, man. This would be a, that's an interesting, that's an interesting uh, potential sniper shot uh, right there. I appreciate that kid. Yeah. Lifetime is the better deal. We'll talk about that down the road, folks. It, if, if you're new to Top Gun Options, get on board uh, and, and make sure I'm not a complete idiot which there's a distinct possibility otherwise, come check us out for a bit. And then we can talk about obviously the lifetime uh, membership down the road. We have, this is the best hedge fund I've ever seen in my life. 212 members. Why? Because we trade our own money. We're not trading the firm's money. You're trading yours. I don't manage money. I manage money. I manage my, my beautiful bride, me. I help my kids learn how to trade options. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, yeah, guys, the, yeah, the, you, there is no chat box in go to webinar, go to training is for under 200 people. We have thousands of people registered for this. Yeah. I have to be in, I have to be in, uh, go to webinar for the full throttle breeze. Another reason why I don't like a shit show. I love having less than 200 members in our member briefs so you all can see each other's chat and chat back and forth and cracking jokes and asking questions of each other and stuff like that. But when we're when we're massive briefs, we're in go to webinars. So my apologies, but yeah, it is what it is. I ain't a charity. I got a TGO's a business. I run a charity and a lot of my money that I make actually goes over the fence. Unlike some charities in this space, but that's a different story that I'm going to take care of. So there we go. Come on, SPX. Look at that. Climbing right out of the... There we go. There we go. You got it, Aaron. Aaron, it is a phenomenal charity. We are saving lives, changing lives, changing attitudes. I had a great meeting with Jim Battisman, one of the largest property owners in Florida, yesterday afternoon. Uh, made a very nice job it's sitting there briefing with the guy he's like here's a check i'm like holy shit man i'm like you just saved uh, a, a a a a good group of veterans uh and he's having me come speak at his charity event in boca where i'm going to auction off uh, some jet flights um good stuff I, I i love i love everything uh that we're doing there's a little shittiness going on in the in the space right now that i'm uh me and some other folks are are are, are going to clean up uh, got a great call today with uh, another Hollywood group. Uh, pretty much there. I'm going to put that out to the universe. Pretty much there on a, uh, 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 well, we'll talk. 
Oh, I, I need to do a separate No Fallen Heroes brief, especially for all, all my angels. It's been a while, but hey, man, I, I'm getting a uh, crash course in, well, it's not a documentary film anymore. I love when you talk to a studio and they break your heart. Yeah, you were not interested in a documentary. I'm like, oh, my God. However, we would love six to eight episodes. I'm like, yay. So from the, it was a, what do they call it? The holy instant, right? Listen to my podcast about my second medicine journey and you'll, so I had a holy instant on a call. I, I in the blink of an eye, I went from despair to, to, uh, to hope. Uh, Sam, if we signed up for an annual full throttle last August, uh, where are we supposed to gain access to Hunter's group? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey man. So Sam, so, and let, for anybody who joins like right now, uh, in the hunters, if you do the monthly or the annual, it's right here, Sam. Maybe you just didn't know where it was, and that's my fault. If you didn't know where it was, it's right here. Underneath member content, go over here to Hunters SDIS, Self Directed uh, Investment Squadron. Okay, so you're welcome, man. Absolutely. That, that's I, I need to do a better job of kind of reminding people then. That's 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 my fault if you didn't know where that was. So for everybody who's getting ready to join and you and based on how my phone's buzzing, we're looking pretty good. Eleven eleven. We are on the right path. Is it it is eleven eleven? How about that? Uh so it's eleven eleven. Become a member. Uh, or don't, man. Trade the rest of this market solo. Uh and and I really, really wish you luck. Uh, Greg, would it make sense to be bullish the big banks and bearish the KRE as an arbitrage? Uh, I love the way you're thinking because he's uh, what he's saying is KRE is the regional bank. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What's that even doing right now? There it is. It's the regional bank uh, index. Um, wow, look at that. So I like the way you're thinking. But I don't. So let me red team the red team of your good idea. Over the weekend, it was that I like the way you're thinking over the weekend because everybody's going to flee the regional banks. They're going to go with Jamie Dimon and, you know, uh, David so or Solomon, the DJ at Goldman Sachs. Everybody's going to destroy the regional banks and flock to the uh, the pinstripe blue bloods on Wall Street. That was a 24 to 48 hour trade. It's over with the fact that Steve Leesman talked to a treasury official who said, yeah, we're all kind of everything's insured now. If anything, I'd reverse your trade. We want to send a clear message to dispositors, including people who shouldn't be bailed out, that we're going to bail out everybody. So I love what you just said two days ago. I don't love it anymore. I might actually do the exact opposite. I think if any money initially ran to those blue bloods, it might actually come back to go into the regionals. And that's also why you're seeing a little bit of a pop today. That makes sense. So I love what you just said. Shameless plug. <clears throat> when you be, if you ever join Lifetime or you're in the hunters, that's the discussion we'd have live. So outside of the trade briefs, folks, we can have that type of back and forth. And not only would you get my, uh, my opinion, Greg, you get everybody else talking about that. I love that. Great, great question, man. I love the arbitrage idea too. What's arbitrage mean, folks? I was in a volatility arbitrage firm. Long oil, short the airlines. That's an arbitrage, right? Or a pairs trade. Oil's going up. Get bearish on the airlines. Ah, oil's going down. To, oil's a teenager again. Get long the airlines. So there's there's pairs trading opportunities, and I like the regional bank versus the uh, the blue blood banks. Yes, I will. Uh, right here, uh, it is. That's the link to join. Real quick, based on your question, let me let me give it again. If you want access to the investment club, the hunters, it's the annual. Which with one trade today, you more or less potentially, I don't want to jinx it, could pay for. Or you try it for a couple months at 497 to make sure, because you, you want to get the training and you also want to be in the investment club. That's the Reese's peanut butter cup in the middle. Okay, so these two, this direction, are Hunter's Investment Club. You got me 24-7. This is just kind of a, I want to get airborne and 
make sure you're not the village idiot. Is that a better explanation? <laughs> so, and we will, folks, at 50, we're done. And based on how everything's going for the past couple of days, um, I'm liking where we're at. We'll, we'll get a good group of 50 new uh, members and uh, we're good to go. <clears throat> in this brief in front of you, you made a thousand bucks so far today. You're welcome. And climbing. So men lie, trades don't. Get your membership now. Even if we get 50 between now and Thursday, I will do a Thursday brief. I'll open it up to the public. It'll be solo Amazon. If you really, really, really just want to dip your toe in, it's like 97 bucks a month, but it is not part of any of this. Ain't no investment club, ain't no anything. We just trade Amazon in, you ready for it? Solo Amazon. So if that floats your boat, uh, come on Thursday's brief. But when we hit 50, there will be no more full throttle memberships available. I do not want a shit show. I don't want a thousand people in the chat box. It gives me agita. I love one-on-one -on -one training, consulting, helping. But if it's a zoo, I've been to these briefs uh, at these other places where as a, as a member, and it's, a, it's, a, I feel bad. I, it, whatever I did, I do the exact opposite of what the crap out there is. So hopefully uh, you can see that uh, coming through. Come on, SPX. I think we're going to get up to, uh, like I said, and I started this brief with, we're going to get a technical bounce up to 39. That was yesterday's brief. And then I said, what today? We're going to get up right to, look at that. Look at, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. So we're kissing the 200 right now. The 200 is at 39.39. So we got six bucks to go up to the 200. And then we might kiss uh, the 100 up here. Then I would exit the bull put spread and smoke my lucky strike and think about a, a bearish sniper shot. Get on board right now, and you'll see that the rest of the day in the hunters. I can only drag you to the water, can't make you drink. Go.topkinoptions.com slash FT dash hunters. Get airborne now before we run out of spots. I will get the replay posted here shortly. It will be on the replay page. I'll tell you what, check your email because I'll post all of these trades. I'm going to be a nice guy today. I'm going to post them all on my member page, but I'll make that page public on our TGO site. So make sure you keep an eye out for an email here in a little bit. And I'll say, hey, click here to see all those trades. I'll show you the regional bank trades and the S&P 500 trades because I'm in a good mood. I'm in an even better mood because SPX keeps popping as I'm talking to you about being in a good mood. So now you're up even more right now. Good stuff. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome aboard to all the new members. If you just joined and you and you got access to the Hunters, I'll see you over here in a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, the replay page is uh, right here. The replay will be, go watch, for all the new people who are in here, go watch the replay from yesterday. Now would be a perfect time. Go watch the replay from yesterday. If you're sitting here going, this guy kind of sounds like he knows what he's doing. Well, I, I introduce who I am and how I kind of might know what I'm doing. Okay. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. Fights on. Namaste and basi, basi. I will see you all tomorrow or I'll see you over here in the Hunters right after you join. Fights on.